you you've had time to scout, assess, bring in new players and things like now now you take over as yeah. head coach. Um yeah. Let, let me let me ask you. I mean, it, your thoughts on what you can do to try to turn this around in the last thirteen games? Yeah, I mean, look. Since I've taken over, there's been a lot of emphasis on defending better because I feel like that's an area that that's going to help us win games. And case in point, the game in Las Vegas. You know, it's not an easy place. Although they're not. They, their record doesn't show it, but it's not an easy place to get get a get a win. A lot of teams have gone in there, and some good teams have actually come out of there with a tie. But we were able to actually, you know, impose ourselves in the, in the first half, uh, get a goal, get up on them, and then kind of close the go- close the game out with another goal. Uh, and that's got to be sort of our model. And uh, we need to we need to defend better. Uh, in the flow of play, we need to defend the set pieces better, which is a play, an area where it's let us down all season. Um, and and then our, I feel like in terms of with the ball, we're we're much better. We're creating more chances. We're scoring goals um, against the ball. We have to be better. And and that's been sort of my message every day in practice. Um, it hasn't really materialized yet except that Las Vegas game but you know I feel like you know we're we're a game away from the guys really and I think they've bought into to, to the idea but we need a couple wins to to get some confidence under these guys belt as well and uh and be able to make a run at this if we if we're ever ever able to do that and like Dib said, you've been with the team, so it's not like it's a bunch of new guys that you're meeting. And you know the situation with these guys. They've had several head coaches. Now, you have been yeah. taking the interim tag off, and you are the full-time coach and looking for the future as well beyond the 2023 season. But just talk to yeah. you guys about that. Like, you know that they're going through that. You know that they've had different voices, not just this year, the last couple of years uh, with coaching yeah. changes. Just for your guys to get over that, is it something you talk about or is it something like no we got soccer to play move on suck it up we got a game going on well obviously we're in the middle of the season so you know we do have games coming up every weekend so you got to be concerned about that you got to prepare for each game but at the same time you need to you know sprinkle in the message that hey look you know you you, we're all playing we're all playing for our job we're all you know, out there trying to earn, you know, a contract for next year or playing time or whatever the case may be. So they're, they've been put on notice. But I, I also, as demanding as I am, I also feel like we're, we're very close, uh, to be honest with you. It, it doesn't show on the scoreboard when you lose 5-2 to, to uh, San Antonio. But if you look at the game, it was 2-2 until the 75th minute. And we were actually playing pretty well you know, against a team that is probably, in my opinion, the most athletic team in the league, probably one of the toughest teams in the league to go in their home and, and play against them. I think prior to the week before when they lost to Miami, they hadn't lost at home for, for I don't know, for maybe a year or so. So uh, we hung in there. Unfortunately, we give up a set-piece call again, an area where we're, we've let ourselves down, and then they kind of broke our back. But you look at all the games, loud and we're up one nothing. Yeah. Um, you know, in uh, the only game I felt like we were like not really into the game is the San Diego game at home, the games that I've coached. Other than that, I felt like you know we're that close, and if we can tighten things up on defensive set pieces, on transition and putting fires out, you know, delaying delaying the other team's transition instead of trying to both to win the ball and, and, and delaying and allowing everybody to get behind the ball, which we did in Vegas. Um, we're, we're, we're just, a, you know, we're just there to, to be able to turn the corner, hopefully. And it starts with this weekend. You know, we got a team that has, has picked up some wins lately, you know, with the coaching change. I know the coach well. He's, he's a good coach. He's got him organized. Uh, but I feel we, we have every chance to win the game, especially here at home. Talking to Hartford Athletic head coach Amid Namazi. Let's take a 
through your life, you know, born in the United States, move back to Iran, move back to the United States, go to West Virginia, become a pro in the 80s, same time I was playing in the major leagues. Um, I'm sure you're a very well-disciplined man, just like myself. Um, now you take over as a coach. You've, you've coached women. Is it different? I mean, it, I, I know I coach younger AAU players from 8 to 18. Is it different with today's players do you have to motivate each individual player as as opposed to when we played, the whole team knew their job was on the line every game? Uh, yeah, I think, you know, certainly players have a different mindset these days. Um, there's got to be a lot more communication. There's got to be a lot more personal care, personal attention to each player. Whereas I remember, <laughs> yeah, as you said, when we played, uh, you know, you hardly ever had like a one-on-one conversation with the coach. I'm having one-on-one conversations with, with players almost on a daily basis. Yeah. I mean, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but it happens a lot. But that's the day and age that we live in now, and that's the type of mindset the players have these days. Uh, they want communication. They want to know the reason why they're playing this way or they're playing that way or they're pl- wh- why they're playing 20 minutes as opposed to 90 minutes. They want to know everything. So it's a, uh, it's a little bit of different, different mindset for sure. I want to know what you thought of the United States women. Now you were the coach on the United States women's national team in 2014. Now a big yeah. bugaboo yesterday as they uh, tied Portugal zero nil nil and made it to the knockout round, but still not happy with their performance. And they're taking pictures and dancing with all their fans. Did that upset you at all? As Carly Lloyd made comments about it, uh, or is that kind of par for the course when you're talking about that specific team and that group of women and their fan following? Yeah, look, look, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what what's going on with um, with uh, the pictures and fans and celebrating and things like that. I didn't see it, but one thing I can tell you, there's been a change of guard. You know, the the Carly Lloyd and and uh, some of the other guys. Uh, are not there anymore, and those those are you know the the players that push the envelope, and you know they push themselves to get over the hump. I think the new generation needs to find uh, that leadership, and and when you look when you look for that leadership on the field, it, it doesn't exist. At least I, in my eyes, it doesn't exist. So uh, we rely on speed on individualism, individual play. Uh, there's not a lot of teamwork. There's not a lot of uh, harmony and, and, and uh, uh, what's the best word? Uh, yeah, I agree. You know, Chemistry. Teamwork. You know, when you look at the, when they played the Dutch team, I mean, the Dutch team made us look like little kids in the first half. Yeah. Now, in the second half, our energy picked up and, our athleticism took over. We were able to put pressure on the Dutch, but we still didn't play. I mean, I looked at a stat the other day. Per action or per a sequence, we're 21st out of all the teams as far as passes that we put together at 2.1 or something like that, whereas the Dutch complete four passes. I mean, that's, those are some of the areas we got to get better. we gotta, we got to have an idea of what we want to do. How, how do we... How do we go forward? How do we defend? I think we're a little bit lost right now, and I'm I'm just hoping that something, um, at, at least with their with their energy and with their passion and their, you know, the history of the U.S. women, you know, getting to these girls and saying, hey, we gotta we gotta continue the winning ways, and uh, and they bring the energy, and based on that, they can get some results. I just I just feel it's gonna it'd be a very difficult job. Have you seen uh, uh, an uptick in, you know, support in the United States for soccer? I mean, I grew up playing it. Um, you played professionally here. Um, you've coached here. You know, the last 10 years, it just seems like, you know, more so than football, basketball, things like that. Soccer has kind of, you know, dominated, I, I guess, the support, uh, you know, especially on the East Coast, as far as I'm concerned, and how much they, they really have – 
uh, fallen in love the way they should have probably 30 years ago uh, in the sport yeah. of soccer. Yeah, of course. I mean, the game's growing. Uh, MLS uh, ha- has become uh, a major player in, in the sports arena uh, of, of this country. It surpassed hockey now, I think. Uh, and then now with, uh, with the presence of one Lionel Messi, I think it's shot it up to another level. Yep. And I think it's going to keep growing. I mean, it's the world's game, and, and we're not apart from the rest of the world. It's gonna it's gonna catch up with us as well, and we're we're gonna we're gonna love the game the same way that the rest of the world does. Because you know, at the end of the day, Pele said it: it's a, it's a, it's the beautiful game. And once the people understand the game, I think they they can fall in love with it. And more and more people nowadays understand the game because at the youth ages, as you know, it's the number one participating yeah. sport across all sports. So as these kids have grown, and this, this was, this isn't just today or five years ago, it's been about 15 years where we're the number one participating sport. So as these kids have grown up, they've become parents, their kids start falling in love with, with the, with the sport. And, and all of a sudden now you have a nation of soccer lovers and, and that's what's happening. And MLS is at the forefront of it. 7 o'clock Saturday, New Mexico coming to town. Hartford Athletic over there at the Dill, the Big Pickle. Trinity Health Stadium, again, 7 o'clock kickoff. And breaking news from the Hartford Athletic today, you just acquired Modesto Mendez, another defender there to beef up the back end. What does he do as far as what you're talking about to really button up things on the defensive side? Yeah, I mean, he brings, uh, you know, one the one element that we lack in a, in a big way, and that's pace in the, in a, on our back line. We constantly got beat over the top, you know, in the space behind. So Modesto is a, one that can stay with anyone. He's got the pace to stay with any any forward from any other team. Um, and he gives us a little bit of bite and toughness as well that I think sometimes we lack. Sometimes it looks like we, we can do it, but we're not consistent enough. This guy, he's a he's a Bruiser, he's a he's a battler. He uh, he will give us some stability and strength in the back line, and uh, very happy to have him. 